I've got this example up here because I want to talk a little bit about the behavior of the graph at the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are, of course, the points whose x values are the zeros of my function and the y value is zero. Now, if I look at this number line where I marked off my zeros, I see that sometimes the function changes sign and sometimes it doesn't at a zero. Now, if I look at the corresponding x-intercepts, here, negative 1, 0 is the x-intercept that has as its x value the 0, negative 1. Now there, the function changed from being positive to negative, so we crossed the x-axis. So I can say that negative 1, 0 is a cross point. My next 0 was 0. The corresponding x-intercept was the origin, 0, 0. And if we look there, the function didn't change sign. It was negative to the left of that point, and it was negative to the right of that point. So what we did is we touched the x-axis, but we didn't cross over to the other side. And so we can call that a touch point. <laughs> and then at 1, 0, again, the function changed sign, and that's reflected in the graph crossing the x-axis. So we'll say that 1, 0 is also a cross point. Now I want to see if there's a way, other than creating this number line and checking the signs, that I can tell whether a 0 is going to correspond to an x-intercept that's a touch point or a cross point. And there is. Now when we were filling out this number line, I generally looked at one interval at a time. I said, okay, if I'm to the left of negative one, I'm plugging in negative two, and I plugged it into each of these factors and then determined the sign of f. But I could also have thought of it more one factor at a time. I did that a little bit with the x squared, because I said x squared is just gonna be positive, 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 all the way across. Now if I look at x plus one, okay, when I plug in negative two, it's negative. When I plug in negative half, it's positive. It changed sign here. Notice it went from negative, and then it was positive all the rest of the time. That's because this 0 of negative 1 goes with that factor of x plus 1. That's the number that makes that factor 0. So the reason the function is 0 at negative 1 is because that factor is 0 at negative 1. And when a factor is 0, that factor could change sign. And in fact, it did. Now if I look at x minus 1, it was negative, 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 then it switched to positive. Where did it change? At 1. That's the 0 that goes with that factor. If x is 1, that factor, x minus 1, will be 0. Now x squared, that also has a 0 associated with it. I'm going to just point out that x squared is actually x times x. So that's two copies of a factor of x that divide into this. Okay. When is x 0? Well, right here at 0. But did it change sign at 0? It did not. Now, if I had just one factor of x, that would change sign at 0. That's negative to the left of 0 and positive to the right of 0. But I had two factors of it. So I had two negatives, which make a positive, and then I had two positives that make a positive. So because the factor associated with this zero was repeated two times, it didn't make a difference if that factor changed sign because it was going to give me two sign changes that would cancel each other out. So how do I summarize this? Okay. Basically, there's going to be this connection between zeros and factors. And we've already seen that because the way I got the zeros was to factor this and then set each factor equal to zero. But I can say if c is a zero of f of x, then x minus c is a factor of f of x. That's always going to be the case. We're used to saying if I have a factor, I can get a zero. Now we say it works the other way around too. If you have a zero, you can get a factor. Okay. The multiplicity of the zero c is 
the number of times the factor x minus c occurs when f is fully factored. Okay. So, 0 was a 0. Okay, If I plugged in 0, it made this 0. The factor corresponding to that would have been x minus 0, or just x. That factor occurred twice. So we would say that 0 had a multiplicity of 2. 1 was a 0. The corresponding factor was x minus 1. That only occurred once, so 1 had a multiplicity of 1. Negative 1 was a 0. The corresponding factor was x minus negative 1, or x plus 1. That occurred once, so that had a multiplicity of 1. Okay. And notice, when the multiplicity was 1, which is an odd number, we were at a cross point. Because when that factor changed sign, none of the other factors changed sign there, and that made the whole polynomial change sign. But when the multiplicity was 2, which happens to be an even number, even though the factor x changed sign, the x squared stayed positive, and so it didn't change sign. Okay. So we can say if c is a 0 of odd multiplicity, then C0, the x-intercept that I can associate with that, will be a cross point. We will cross the x-axis at that location. On the other hand, if C is a 0 of even multiplicity, then C0 the corresponding x-intercept is a touch point. So just by looking at the multiplicity of the zero, so once I've got things in factored form, how many times does each factor appear, I can determine whether we're going to cross or touch the x-axis at that point. So that's another way that I can determine the shape of a graph. And in the, next ex in the next video, we'll do an example where that's the main skill that we rely on for figuring out the shape of our graph.